So guys, hello and welcome to, let's see it behind me, Chevronics Limited. So I've been up here today to get the gearbox fluid done on the 407, which you can probably tell, a Citroen predominantly and a Persia specialist. So let's go inside and see what's going on in there. Look at this, absolutely beautiful, beautiful sights here this morning. Let's head on in and see what is inside, because I'll tell you what, it is a surprise. Check this out, not a new car in sight. Morning, Lewis. How you doing, okay? I'm good, thank you, mate. How are you? Yeah, not bad. You're making your way over there. So, we'll take a look at some of our, some of our sales cars, give you a quick rundown. Yeah, of course. I'll tell you what, we'll start with the one that isn't for sale. Yeah. This is uh, this is uh, my brother Miles's car. Yeah. Um, he bought it from France when he was, I think he was sixteen when he got this. Um, wow. Needed a bit of recommissioning work. We've done some paintwork to it. Yeah. Um, had the wheels refurbished, hubcaps, had the engine out, stripped, rebuilt. I'll show you the engine better. This one. This is a. Uh, it's pristine. Uh, lovely, lovely little thing. Let's <laughs> get that interior shot as well, though. The funky dashboard, seeing yeah. spikes here. Yeah, it's like a uh, tan, tannish brownie sort of colour. Something like that. But this is a, this is nice. Eat, eat your oh, dinner wow. off of that. Oh wow, it's lovely. All the, the plated parts mm. down here, the painted wheel arches, the new dump tubes. Um, yeah, he's done a nice job of this. A first car as well, so it's a. Uh, no way. That something is something else. Yeah, really it's nice. A nice thing. This is a nice one we got in, uh, 20, oh, low 20,000 miles, uh, wow. two owners, a gentleman who owned it unfortunately passed away, so we've been given it uh, by their family to, to move on, but a real genuine car, never been painted, um, it needs to go to a nice new owner, but completely, completely rust free, runs, drives beautifully, it's got mm. the 1100 engine, a four-speed gearbox which is a more and I don't think it's a particularly desirable combination but you find the 11 speed and the four-speed gearboxes uh, third to fourth gear or second to third I can't remember always crunch this doesn't so that's quite oh, nice. nice it's actually crisp it really is rust free all the chrome's clean yeah is that like um is it half level you'd class it as I guess it's uh, I think it's vinyl in this one is it yeah vinyl is interior it? so you wouldn't want to get in it on a hot day no, it's been re-trimmed or is that? Completely, completely original. That Last very well. You can see on the door cards, it's done the usual thing where they wrinkle. Mm. Which is a shame. But... Yeah, that's gorgeous. Interior again. Let's see, Chorus. It's like, a, it's like a brushed steel, brushed aluminium looking yes, plate correct. on there as yes. well for the dials. Yeah, looks great. This car shouldn't be in here. This was saved from a scrapyard in I think it's the early 80s. Well, um, French scrapyards. I, I don't know what was wrong with it, what it needed, but again, being a French car, completely rust free, came out of the scrapyard, and this is as it looked in the scrapyard. It's, it's not had any paintwork since. You've got a mismatched door on the rear. <laughs> it's yeah. just a, a nice car with a nice background to it. Obviously, it's had the seats re trimmed, which have completely transformed the interior oh yeah that is gorgeous but it's quite a desirable one it's an early left-hand drive model if you look at that dashboard yep you've got the black on the green oh yeah you can see it there yeah which is quite nice and the other thing as well these rear lights you get cathedral rear lights mm -hmm. which are quite desirable compared to uh, when you look at the blue estate lights they're just kind of straight cut yeah it's gonna be a proper word for one yeah um, and the other thing as well, on the front here, honeycomb grill. Yeah, I saw that on there. It looks really nice. Which in comparison to the other GS we've got in here, yeah, um, this is a much more uh, desirable one. Yeah. We've got a bit of a, a pattern with uh, GS, GSAs in here at the moment. Mm. These two both came from the same gentleman owner. This one really is the ultimate GS, the GS by Roaster, it's got a rotary engine in it. Is it? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, about under 20 are left at the moment. Uh, this, is a, this is a lovely car, uh, recently been painted, done quite a nice job of it. Uh, I think it's a, you could say, you can't say it about a lot of cars, but it's a near immaculate car. Um, can't 
colour's really nice as well. Very nice colour. It's like a champagne-y sort of blur, actually. Something like those ones. Yeah. But it's nice, you've got the flared arches in the front and roof. You've only got the bi-rotor, obviously because of the, the, the larger wheels. Hmm. Um, but it's an interesting piece. It is an interesting piece. Nice twin colour as well. I didn't realise the roof was a different colour yeah. to the... They're interesting to drive. It's got a, a three-speed C-Matic. So you've got the gears. You yeah. Changed the gear, but no clutch pedal. <laughs> Very strange one. That's crazy. But it drives lovely. The only thing with it is, it's mm. typical rotary. It smokes. It, it, it uses a little bit of oil. It's a real shame because it, no one that I know out there that'll touch the engine. Mm. We certainly won't touch it because you can't buy any parts for it. No. We've done an oil change on it and that's about as far as we'll, uh, we'll go. Yeah. Rally built GS, brought new in France, very shortly after it was brought new, it was converted into the rally car it is today. Wow. Um, the gentleman wasn't scared to take it out, use it on rallies, and enjoy it. Um, it it's quite a, quite a well built car, bolting roll cage, uh, five point Williams harness, you've got all the trip master gauges down there, sat nav, everything you need. Oh, yeah. um, and surprisingly, for the amount of rallies it's been on, mm. it has held up quite well. You look underneath it, you'd expect all the floor pans to be uh, dented inwards where it's bottomed out, but completely, again, rust free, immaculate underside, and it still drives beautifully. Yeah. You wouldn't have thought it's been used around rallies. And you can just see from the stickers some of the some of the rallies it's been on. Yeah. So quite a quite an interesting story with this one. Yeah, it's really special. So this one stands out a little bit compared to the other cars in the showroom. We, we do like a few English cars here. We've got the, the old Riley out there as well. That we've just sold. Um, this was my great granddad's car, actually. Oh, my dad wow. um, inherited it, stored it, had it painted, and it doesn't get used too much anymore. Uh, it might go out a couple of times a year for a car show, but we brought it in here. It was at home in our garage, but it's getting, getting a bit damp. So we brought it into the dry, warm showroom, gave it a good polish and wax, and it just sits here. It's not for sale, it's just sitting here, being mm. admired where it should be. Um, it's, it's, it's nice, it's still got that old, that old British car smell. You can never recreate that once it's gone. And it's oh, held, yeah. up, held up remarkably well. Lovely thing to drive. Ah, oh, the wooden, proper wood that's actually screwed onto the door. Yes. Car as well. That's lovely. Yeah, charming, charming little thing. So this is another display car we've got in here. This was brought from London, 2012. £200 uh, we paid for it. <laughs> wow. Because one of the return rubber return hoses had failed at the time. You couldn't buy them. So £200, it was going to be scrapped on the... Uh, I think the story goes it was supposed to be scrapped on the, the Monday and we collected it on the Sunday. So it was a real wow. close call for it. It's never been taxed or MOT'd since then, but it drives beautifully. We've done all the hydraulic work, tires, refurbished wheels, refurbished hubcaps. Um, it's just a nice, genuine example. One of those things, it's not been tinkered with, all the screws under the bonnet and where they should be. You've not got aftermarket uh, hose clips holding things on. Everything is as it would have been when it was new. So. It's not doing any harm here. It's an original car and can't get much more original than that. Yeah, it really is pristine. So another thing we do here is parts remanufacturing. We, we, well, we have a lot of old second-hand parts we can sell, uh, as well as new, genuine Citroen parts. But a lot of the things, serviceable items, like your rubber components that fail, you've got the rear suspension gaiters, uh, these are lower arm bushes for, for GS, GSAs, and these are for Citroen CX. All the bits that fail and that can put the car off the road, we've had remade, so you're able to uh, keep them going. This is just a small selection. We've mm. started to get into the more modern bits for Citroen C6s and, and whatnot, but uh, suspension top mounts, uh, if the rubber part fails on here, your strut shoots through the bonnet, meaning you need new top mount and, and bonnet. Yeah. Um, and these were a real problem for quite a while. All you could buy was second-hand units. Mm. So now that we've had these made, it means you can keep, well, replace them when they need replaced. You mm. don't have that worry of the uh, strut going through the bonnet. But the parts remanufacturing bit is probably the most um, important part yeah. about it. Like this BX, it 
if we didn't remanufacture the pipes for it, it wouldn't be here today. Yeah, definitely. So guys, at Chevronix, there are three categories of car, um, and these two little gems here sit right in the middle of being a classic car. And what was the other one you described it as? So, I, I, I've always, me personally, I don't think it's the same for everyone, but me personally, the cars we sell here, and I was explaining it to you earlier, I think you get the three categories. Mm. You get the classic cars, stuff you see in the showroom, the Riley, the ZX, uh, the BX over there, the classic cars that'll sell on Car and Classic. You've got the more modern cars over here, like the 10, uh, 108, yep. C4, Cactus, not necessarily designed for Casso. They're the more modern cars that you put on Auto Trader and Auto Trader is the place they sell. You've got the middle cars, uh, the Saxo, the Zara Casso and the Zantia. They're not quite classic, they're not quite a modern car. Mm. They're the cheap cars, not the Zantia, but the, the, the Zara Casso and Saxo are ULEs mm. and they sit in that middle ground where car and classic they won't sell. Also traded, they won't sell. Mm. They're the kind of cars that are cheap. I'll have a customer come in um, who might have an older car, it's broken down, they want a cheap little runabout, run around. And that's where they, those cars sit. That's how yeah. I find it personally. I'm sure other people say otherwise, but that's what I'm just Yeah. Sounds good. And it's nice to have the, the variety, the classic, the modern, and the, the middle ground. Yeah. So you've always got a sort of a, a car to suit everyone's price range, but I guess also with that, if you have a customer coming to you that's looking for a set car, you've got the know-how, the experience, and know where to look to find yeah, them yeah. a car as well. Yeah. That's, um, that's, that's the nice thing about it. I have done a few in the past. The only trouble I have with that is you don't know what you're buying. You're, you're trusting another seller. Yeah. Um, and if it goes wrong, it's a bit of a grey area. I found the car. Mm but I can't always warrant that. So mm. it's a difficult one, but I haven't been, I've been all right up to date, so. Yeah, that's perfect. So I thought I'd show you around the back here, yep. some of the stuff we've got going on. Uh, at the moment, it's kind of ranging. We've got a lot of BXs, XMs, um, and then we've got a few of these more. I, I would class these <laughs> modern Citroëns. You know, yeah, yeah. Free, uh, I think 03 plate Citroens you, you kind of find in my opinion that's when they start to get a little bit more a little bit more modern you've got your comforts with the uh, cam plus BSI systems uh, the electric window and all the uh, uh, you'd call it mod cons that you'd expect to standard yes, nowadays yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the way to put it you can get in one of these cars and it feels modern where you jump back to something like the Xantia yeah and that to me feels like um, I've had, I've got a C5 at the moment, mm. and this is a custom Zantia. I've had Zantias in the past, and I always find the Zantia feels a lot dated. I agree, it's a more attractive looking car, um, and more Citroen, I guess you could put it, but mm. I think the C5 is a better car. Yeah. Um, what have we got here? We've got a, a BX Estate. This is a customer's car, it's been off the road a number of years. Recommissioned this, gone through it. It needs a good clean. It's been here a little while. Normally, when you get these cars in, you go through the motions. You've got the rubber hydraulic pipes that tend to fail on them. Mm. They go hard, they go brittle. So, we've had them all remade. Because it's such a serviceable item, if you don't have them on the car, the car isn't fit for the road. So, we've gone through doing the pipes, the suspension gaiters, you know, standard tyres, brakes, a bit of welding work. And this one's now all done ready to go back to the customer so that's nice to get that gone get some more space freed up yeah yeah i love all the old one wipers on these it's a proper old school situation over all the yes. singular wipers yes very much so very much so big swooping wiper yeah and then we've got the bx16 valve here this has been a real labor of love for the gentleman that <laughs> owns it um he brought it down to us failed the mot emissions abs faults horrible horrible of work to be doing on these cars but he's had it all stripped out he sent it away to be welded we've got it back engine box has been out it's all been put back in and now we're in the position where it's mot ready he's going to get it all painted which is why we, i don't even see we've got all the interior out in it at the moment oh yeah so that's going to be the the, the next stops for this one it's the kind of thing you, you start working on it, you expect it to be a straightforward, stripping everything out for welding, sending it off. Mm. While you've got it stripped out, you do the, the engine's out, it's easy to do the cam belt, may as well do a clutch. Didn't 
need one, but well, the engine box is out now, so time to be doing it. Yeah. And then you've got all the pipe work, the front to rear suspension pipes. Again, whilst it's out, may as well get it all done at once. So this is now in for MOT. I think we fixed the emissions fault. Yeah. We fixed the ABS fault. Yeah. So that should be a, a, a nice one to. to I was going to say, that's super rare anyway in itself, that is. I'm yes. sure they are. I don't know how many of those they made, but I know that that's a super, super rare variant. It's the, the sought-after model, especially the Phase 2 with the nicer body kit. It hasn't got all of the body kit on at the moment because it's going to paint. Some's been taken off by the mm. body shop, yeah. some hasn't. Um, but again, it's just a, a... They demand so much time in this condition. Yeah. So this is a, a Series 2 XM 2.5 diesel. No. These are a, a nightmare to work on. Uh, you, you get a lot of the 2.1s, which are all right. You get a lot more room in the engine bay. And these 2.5s, they're brilliant engines, but there's no room to be doing anything. We've done timing belts on these. They've got a balance belt as well. Oh, wow, look at the gap. And the diesel pump refurbished. Yeah. Now, I don't quite know the, the technicalities of this, but they have some kind of electro valves in them. Mm. Um, regulates fuel pressure. I, I, I don't know. I might be wrong in that. Um, we have these electro valves, and they tend to fail, and the engine hunts or tick over. These have failed. You can't buy them. So we've had the diesel pump done because this top seal was leaking. But it's a shame because you can't buy these pipes, it continues hunting on idle, which is a bit of a shame. But it's it's a weird setup. If you look down here, you've got your accelerator cable coming to this, uh, this, this, this <laughs> yeah. unit here. So why they can't have a reliable cable going straight through, if this fails, that's it. You get no throttle. No. So a bit of a nightmare. But when they work, lovely, lovely engines. Such a weird way for it to run as well, isn't it? Very strange. And you can see, as you see with all the Citroëns of this sort of age, you've got your spear. Well, one of them, the other one's over on the other side over there. But... Are they painted green like that from factory, are they? Yes, yes they oh, are. Oh, nice. They are indeed. Um, Just make the engine bay uh, even looking even more peculiar than it does already. Yes. Still it can't stands out, that. doesn't it? Yeah. It's different, definitely. So this one, CX25 DTR Turbo Familial. It's the last one ever made. We've recently sold this one for a customer, uh, a proper Citroen enthusiast. He had uh, Series 2 Familial, Series 1 Familial, uh, C6 3 litre petrol, not diesel like yours. Very rare. Um, AX, Morris Miners, you know, Xantia V6 Series 2. Nice. All sorts. So he's, he's had to sell all his collection. This is the final one. Funnily enough, this one is the most, this one was his favorite car of the collection. Mm. And this is one that took the longest to sell. Yeah. Uh, I, I can imagine it's the kind of car you've got to really want it. Yeah. It's not the kind of thing you can take to your local <laughs> shops and park <laughs> easily. Um, it's actually unbelievably long. It doesn't look it too much in the, in the camera, but yeah, that must a, be. It's a very, very long car. Parking it up, you've got all this window Mm. No trouble with parking. Um, and it's, a, it's an interesting engine. 2.5 turbo diesel. Not exactly quick, but it's all right for its age. That they're, they're at the age where the diesel is still agricultural, mechanical diesel pump. Yeah. But it is quite nice. You go down the road, you accelerate, and you can hear the turbo spooling. Yeah. Up. It's quite. It's quite nice. Um, yeah. This. This is sold. This is going end of the month, I think, to the customer. So. Yeah. You'll enjoy this. I hope. Yeah, so it's probably one of the only times you've ever seen one of these on the channel. And if you couldn't tell by the little sweep along the window, it is the uh, seven-seater as well. Are they fold down in the boot, or are they just? Is it just a fixed seven? I'll be completely honest. I don't know. I've been asked this in the past. I should know, and I don't. I see. It looks like it. Are, it looks like they've got a lever. Yeah. In the middle there. You can see it in through there. Look. So this one we've had in the showroom. Bought it from France, Calais, Calais. I believe it was bought from Calais. Transported back from the lady uh, who owned it previously, mm. gone through the car, recommissioned it, uh, painted all the arches, wheels refurbished, done all the, the right bits of work to it. This one was for sale for a little while, and this is now sold and waiting to be exported to America. It's going to LA. That's amazing. It's, uh, it, it's brilliant. So we're waiting on the registration documents, got them back, um, and they were registered wrong. 
Okay. So we can't export <laughs> it for long details. So we're waiting for that to come back for our friends at old DVLA. But just little things like in the engine bay. It's just a very, very tidy example. Oh, yeah. Lovely tidy arches. All the plating. You don't get this. No, that doesn't count. But all the plating, top mounts as well. And even on these pipes, you don't get this on a UK car. They're all surface corroded or mm. so it's it's nice to see the difference between a, a French spec car compared to a UK you know starter motor on here oh, all your, yeah. your oil filter uh, oil curler still got its plating on yeah. you just you just don't see it on the UK cars no. anymore it's absolutely pristine and the interior is just as good as well oh it's a blue um oh it's a blue interior as well yes <laughs> that's cool now the plastics blend in with all of the interior panels, yeah? Yes, yeah, that's right. Ah, that's really cool. I've always loved these. When I was looking at one of the cars in the um, showroom, I thought it was like a just a black uh, painted panel. Yes, or, yes. But it's actually a window. Yeah, Perspex, Perspex glass. Oh. They all fade and they yeah. all crack. You can't buy them. So a lot of the time, if it's faded, you can machine polish them up, which we've had done to these. Sometimes yep. they, they go a bit can't see because it's dirty but they they almost graze a little bit so they don't polish up as nice as you'd expect mm. um, but they crack all we can do is we cut out this very <laughs> quarter panel from a scrap car mm. and you can very very carefully splice this out yeah put, change them over it's not a nice job no but it is doable um, for the right money <laughs> I guess that was for rear visibility back in the day maybe yeah it was it was only on the highest spec cars uh, ah, DTR okay. TRS I'm sure another spec, but they're the two I know of. Yeah. Um, yeah, nightmare to, to maintain. Nightmare. I can imagine. What was the estate doing over in the corner? Uh, the estate is similar to the other estate up there. Yeah. Uh, 190,000 miles or so. <laughs> That's a, a 1.7 turbo diesel. Yeah. Um, they use it to take their dogs out. Failed the oh, MOT cool. catastrophically on welding. Uh -huh. Had all the rear end welded, the sills, the front floors. He's had all of his pipe work done, new tyres, a lot of money has been spent on that car and unfortunately it's it's been a labour of love, it's, it's the kind of thing you see it more and more often now, people mm. don't spend the money because they're going to get it back, they spend it on the car because they like it, Yeah, which is what they've done on this one, yeah. but that's finally done, waiting for that to be collected. Yeah, nice. So check that out, 50 million shades of blue. Very old school retro interior. Even the door cars look. Righty, so we've got this Citroen Visa. Custom brought it down to us uh, a little while ago now. Um, it's been with us for a short while. He originally came in with a water leaking issue. They've got a water pipe that's pressed into the head. Um, you can't buy the pipe separately. And, and of course, you can't buy it separately and it leaks. What can you do? So he managed to machine one up for him. And it's been a labour of love for this car, constantly, one thing after another. You fix water leak, it was leaking fuel, did the fuel leak, and then it starts misfiring. It's been one thing after another, after another. All done, as I was just saying to you, it's all done. Went to go to him to come pick it up, and then we checked the water level, use all of its water, and it's a head gasket. So it's, it's one thing after another, but we will get it done. We will keep it going. It's just, um, it's finding the time. Got all the cars here with two technicians. Trying to squeeze it all in, really, but yeah, charming car. The gentleman that owns it absolutely loves it, so we'll we'll get it back to him one day. So this is mighty clean. A little bit of a story behind it. So uh, go ahead when you're ready. Yeah, it's um, gentleman owned this. Owned his Antia as well. Lovely little 1.4 TU. Uh, what is it? Uh, I think it's a quite quite a well spec car, if I remember correctly. I can't. What is it? A, yeah, TG, TGE. 14 TGE. Um, he offered it to me a number of years ago when it was still on the road. Um, but unfortunately, he didn't end up sending it to me and it sat and sat and sat. And, um, now, unfortunately, bless him, he's in a home. So we've gone and picked this up, still waiting for the Xantia to come through. But this will be a, a sale car we've got coming in shortly. Very, very tidy example of the car. Just needs to. Uh, to be gone through standard timing belt, 
hydraulic pipes, like I was saying about the estate over there, mm. just going through it and mm. making it good. But this would be a real good car for someone. It's about to be garage, it looks like it has been. Yes, yeah, it's yeah, really dry decent. stored in a garage. Yeah. The Xanti we've got coming in, I thought that was a dry stored garage, and you walk in there and it's wetter inside the garage than oh, it was outside. No. But I don't think it's caused any issue. Um, yeah. I don't know if this one's as tidy as the other BX we've got. Yeah. Yeah, it's, quite, it's had all the right things done to it. See all this wax. Um, mm. It's all been protected. Yeah. So it's had the right right work done to it. Again, just needs going through and making right. Yeah. It runs on fuel. Uh, well, sorry, with with fresh fuel. Mm. Uh, we we'll just have to work in progress. But it's, yeah, it's a nice place to start compared yeah. to some of the other stuff. I guess you get come in. So. Oh yes. <laughs> showcase us what is this so special about this one so series one Xanti Activa mm. um, special about the Activa you've got the uh, active uh, body roll um, so normal cars you go around the bend uh, you've got the body roll and this uh, reduces it oh nice um, very complex to work on you look at the rear end the pipe work on the rear end is an absolute nightmare to deal with mm. it's been sat for a number of years when I say every single metal hydraulic pipe was rusty everything has had to be replaced oh, there wasn't gosh. a single one we found that was okay mm. and then it's the standard thing of going through the motions you fix one leak at the front one leaks at the back you fix the back leak you're back to the front because it's leaking again and back oh, four no. back four mm. um, we've had this for quite a while now and we've finally got to the bottom of all the leaks uh, got it through its MOT timing belts got it running Indicator lens fell off, <laughs> but it's now the finishing touches of, right, is it ready for the road? Is it suitable for the road? What things could go wrong when it goes back to the customer? It's kind of um, uh, uh, preempting any, hmm. any issues. So it's nearly there, a few final things to do. There was talk about whether they're gonna get the paintwork done to it, but it's quite, it's grown on me, the lack of pill. <laughs> I know it sounds really daft, but, what do you do? What yeah. do you do? It's a difficult one. If you do that, you're going to want to do the bumper. And yeah, the it's all down the side as well. Yeah. The indicator in the unit. On the roof. The badges. Yeah, it's it's all over. Um, but it's a nice car. It runs nice. Drives nice. Done all the right work to it. Mm. But that's, a, that's an interesting car. Not many of these. It's nice to have another one being put back on the road. Yeah. So it's looking a little bit mad maxi at the minute. What's going on with this one? Yeah, looking a bit poorly for itself. This is a... Uh, Again, another customer's car, recommissioning job. Been off the road a number of years. From my understanding, now I might have got this wrong, it's been it's been so long I don't quite remember. Mm. From my understanding, customer got this restored uh, 10 years ago or so. Yeah. Didn't use it that much, parked it up, and now everything's deteriorated over time, and now he wants to get it back on the road again. I think that's how the story goes. He had, I think he's got three of these. Oh, wow. That might be another one. I yeah. I don't quite remember. But this has come in, uh, brake calipers are leaking, non-runner, the alternator had seized, so it's throwing the alternator belt off, oh, gosh. blocked radiator, overheating, the headlining's come off, blah, 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 the list goes on. So we're slowly working through this, getting the, getting it up and running. Did the first road test the other week, overheated, firm stats, jammed shut, went open. Yeah. So we've had to go get one of those. Um, fuel tank refurbs, it was leaking. Um, so we're going going through it. We're getting somewhere now, but like I've said with the other cars, they take up so much time. You, it's trying to find the time to get it in, and you can spend six hours on it, and you don't get that far. Mm. You might not even tick something off the list. So mm. we're getting somewhere with it. I do look forward to getting it getting it back to the customer to free up yeah. a little bit of room. It's hard to get it all done when you've got all the existing bookings coming in as well. Yeah, you got so. you got like like your stuff that comes in during the day, mm. and even knows just a gear oil change it still takes a few hours to do mm. and then something like this you can spend a, a day on it and do a little bit of work but then you've got to uh, prioritise what you've got day work mm. coming in as well so mm. a bit more difficult yeah definitely so I want to say a massive thank you for having me getting the car done I'm going to run through a little bit about how to get in touch with you guys and course, what you guys offer go to Google and type up Chevronic Centre you'll find our website all of our details are there we're very active on Facebook as well you can find us at uh, Chevronic Centre on Facebook we're always posting sales cars what we've got going on in the workshop or anything interesting going on so find us there 
excellent again thank you you've been tremendous on camera uh, and i appreciate you guys having me down here today to make a video Glad you. Cheers,